It's pretty damn nice, ain't it? Two amigos drinking just like old times. What I can't figure out is how come we can't be friends no more, Jack? Boy, I'm serious now, I am. Well, hell, Cash, we grew up best friends. I left. I went out where the dogs barked. Dallas, Houston, Chicago, New York. Didn't work. The only thing that ever scared the hell out of me, Cash, was myself. So I come home and I put the badge on and things were right. When I got home, I looked around for my old friend. He wasn't there. He's gone. He's gone, Cash. He's gone goddamn bad. Nah, you went bad on me. Lost his sense of humor, went and got yourself outfitted, government issue, and we all got his flaws in our character, but that sure as hell beats mine. Well, you almost had a cash, but you turned. I turned when I saw the light, boy. Came shining down on me like a bolt of lightning. Made me see how to do it, how to get everything I wanted, get it all. Now you tell me about this light, Cash. Does it feel right or does it feel wrong? Oh, hell, ain't no right or wrong. There's only choices, and everybody's got to make their own, goddammit. That's God-given. Who the fuck are you or anybody to take that away? I'm just a poor boy that rose up. Nobody ever gave me nothing. Ain't nobody gonna take away what I got. That's about what I figured. Somebody that thinks he's tough as a nickel steak. But they all come to speed for the go Ray me. Now get this. We ain't partners. We ain't brothers and we ain't friends. My little brother was 15 years old. Think about that. You'll wait on me How about cutting heat? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're a real smart boy, ain't you? I guess maybe you'll have to kill me. Absolutely imperative that this job looks like civilian operation. Get down! Kiss the floor! I expect a little cooperation. Also, I expect you to stay out of my way. Put the damn gun down, soldier! Somewhere in America, a secret war is being waged. This is a case of national security. Go. A war of deception. It's a daylight hit. I come over to talk about the bomb that went off yesterday. I got two people dead. Fought by a phantom army. Sergeant Buck Adwater killed Laos in 74. How can they be officially dead and two of them locked up in there? It's classified. Now, he's the only one that stands in their way. I got a feeling the next time we run into each other, we're going to have a killing. Termination with extreme prejudice. Anyone could be the enemy. Tell the FBI to kiss my... Tell me about it. I can't talk about it. I gotta do something about it. Nothing is what it seems. The hell's the military robbing banks in Texas for? And unless he can stop them, it's poison. Everything he stands for is at stake. Very unusual. What is? Ordering the termination of an American civilian peace officer, clearly loyal to the country and in the process of bringing a known criminal to justice. What we're gonna do is we're told. Right, Sergeant? Kill him. Kill him like an animal. The only thing that ever scared the hell out of me, Cash, was myself. We are space age high tech, and we get caught by some stone age cowboy. Nick Nolte. Extreme Prejudice. Hello, folks. Welcome to episode 10 of uh, Last Call of Torchies. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With me, as usual, is Cameron Scott. Hey, how the hell are you? I'm I'm doing fine, man. I'm uh looking forward to going Mexico away in 
T- talking about some drugs and shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> going going to the Cash's side of the river. Man. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely badass. We'll, we'll get into that for sure. Uh, also with us today is, as per usual, is Mr. Lee Russell. How you doing, sir? Uh, d- despite what the military will tell you officially, I'm alive and well. And cool. Not having a bad day. So there we go. It's like a filthy A-team. We're here to talk to you about this great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Extreme Prejudice <laughs> from 1987, uh, and that's, I think that's the way I described all, all of our military characters in this movie when I first did this, like, uh, a decade ago on those lost shows, uh, as like a filthy A-team, but, um, your cheapo plot synopsis is this, a Texas Ranger and a ruthless narcotics kingpin, they were childhood friends, now they're adversaries. Weak sauce IMDB, there's so much oh, more to it than uh, that. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. That's it, horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, but the 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 the, re, the real thing is is you know that they were childhood friends, but um, this guy played by Powers Booth uh, is a drug dealer, and, and there's a a side plot in there where he has a lot of money over the border, and this group of, of presumed dead military men are going to steal said money, and Powers Booth and Nick Nolte are in a love triangle. See, it's hard for me to describe this film. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Maria Conchita Alonso is involved. <laughs> but, um, this is directed by Walter Hill. Uh, story by John Millis. Millis is pretty badass. Uh, story by Fred Rexer. Screenplay by, come on, stupid thing. This is, okay, good job. Derek Washburn. <laughs> Not cutting that out at all, guys. <laughs> Not doing it. Not a bit. Not, Not a bit. bit. This has, um... One of the one of my favorite casts of a of a Walter Hill film because a lot of these guys show up again, which was kind of sad. Uh, Nick Nolte as um, Texas Ranger Jack Benteen, Powers Booth as Cash Bailey, Michael Ironside as Major Paul Hackett, Maria Conchita Alonso, you may know her from The Running Man and Predator Two, as says Sarita mm-hmm. Sinceros, uh, the Great Rift Torn, take from us too soon in this movie, uh, wow. Sheriff Hank Pearson. Clancy Brown, Sergeant Larry McRose, William Forsyth as Sergeant Buck <laughs> Atwater, <laughs> and how uh, P- Pat Mulhern as Sergeant Declan Patrick Coker, Larry B. Scott, yes, that Larry B. Scott, uh, as Sergeant Charles Biddle, and um, y- you get a random Lynn Shea signing in this movie, and a random mm-hmm. t- Tiny Zeus Lister role in this movie, and I think it's a good time. I'm, I'm showing my colors early, y'all. But I'm gonna give this to Cameron first and uh, tell us all about the film, sir. Well, I, I remember seeing this way too young, so I, I didn't appreciate some of the serious overtones of it when I first saw it. But over the years, I've grown to love this movie. I'm I'm spending my load early. I I fucking love this movie. It's it's everything that the '80s was great for. <laughs> you know, cocaine, sweat. Tom Tiny Lister Jr., you know, Nick Nolte, uh, Powers Booth, just chewing up the scenery like no other person can. Like, uh, he, he's he's a wonder to behold in this movie. He's such a great sleazy guy. Like you said, there's so much A-team qualities in this movie, but it's like the A-team of sweat and bullets, you know, and these people actually <laughs> take bullets. <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's gritty. It, it, it's I think this is the beginning of the era of, uh, you know, when Walter Hill was going full blown action, you know, between this and Red Heat and everything that followed, you know, he was going full blown action mode, and I love it. More and more I watch it, the more and more I love it. I love the uh, Vestron video or the the special edition that just came out. I can't remember if it was Vestron video or Arrow that put it out because I buy so much, you know, mm-hmm. Blu-rays and shit. And I can't remember who put out what, <laughs> but it was a great little, uh, you know, re- release and. Uh, I love this movie. It's it's got some questionable uh, dialogue in a lot of scenes that does not age <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I didn't remember that. I hadn't watched this movie in about three or four years, and when that came on, I was just like, "Whoo, buddy!" That's just uh, William Forsythe is going to have to make some apologies for some yeah, shit. Yeah, he's but, he's your uh, he's your test of whether you can stomach that shit or not. Right, right. I, I think and. and you got to get credit to Larry B. Scott holding his own with a, you know, an action crowd, you know, with, with people like Michael Ironside and Clancy mm. Brown. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's great all around. It, it's a little slow in the middle, but I, I, 
I, I love this movie. Nothing but thumbs up. Lee, go ahead, brother. Yeah, so I think I alluded to this being a first-time watch for me uh, in previous episodes. Um, I love this. This is probably, you know, in our little rankings we're doing in our heads, uh, this is probably – edged its way into the top five for me uh, as far as yeah. Walter Hill stuff goes. Uh, I love this from start to finish. It's unapologetically just a big macho testosterone fucking balls to the wall kind of tribute to Sam Peckinpah. Um, I mean, this is basically just a neo-Western or, you know, just straight up call it a Western, whatever you want to say. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, just, just set in modern, modern times. Uh, it plays like a traditional Western with all the sort of tropes, the bad guy, the good guy, the woman caught in between. They used to be friends and now they have to face off. All of that stuff is classic, classic Western. And then it throws in the monkey wrench of the Sam Peckinpah style Western. And all of a sudden you've got this pseudo wild bunch in here playing by their own rules, doing their own thing out for their own gain. Um, but they have their code of honor. And then Walter Hill is smart enough and Emilius is smart enough writing this to throw some twists on top of that. So we get some twists at the end that uh, further add some intrigue. And it, the amazing thing is it all works. Like there's so much going on, but it all works. And it still manages to just be this really easy to follow uh, tight action film with just a lot of, by, by, the, by the end, it just it turns into a full out uh, wild bunch. The ending of the wild bunch where everyone's getting shot, and it goes fucking crazy. And it's got all these great actors giving these great performances. And I, uh, yeah, like I said, I loved it from top to bottom. It was fucking great. I didn't mention this before, but um, we're talking about the, the credits of the film. Um, music by Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah, mm -hmm. mixed, mixed with some Ry Cooter in there too. Um, really elevate this film as well, and. I forgot to mention who shot this as well, which is a guy named Matthew F. Leonetti, who, who shot me a couple things that you probably have seen, including Poltergeist and um, hmm. oh. well, this is Breaking Away. Uh, I'm a fan of that as well. You know, the Cutters for Life, I guess, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, The Ice Pirates. Again, cool. going, going on the list, guys. Uh, I love The Ice Pirates so much. It's just so retarded. Mm -hmm. Shot Commando, which, you know, Shot that before this, so yeah. Uh, if you love Commando, uh, like I do, um, Action Jackson, and he would shoot um, Red Heat and, and Johnny Hanslem and another Forty Eight Hours, you know, later on for Walter Hill, and um, mm. even lesser shit that I love. A low down dirty shame is a guilty pleasure of mine. Starting oh, yeah. great, oh, big time, yeah. great Keenan Ivory Wayans. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, great, great shit, man. You, you feel. I, I describe films where you know it's very very hot outside. You can that the heat the heat outside almost becomes a character of the film, and the heat in this film, especially over there in the, in the Mexico scenes, you know, you really feel into this movie as you're watching it. Man, there's the amount of sweat going on, and it's just like it's hot enough in fucking Texas or wherever the fuck they start out, and fucking <laughs> right, and you know, and even then, like Rick Torn's wearing a full fucking like suit and shit. I'm like, dude. I, I, I hope you don't have to, like, walk or anything today, because as soon as you do, you're going to start sweating balls. Like, Yeah, you step out, out the door in two seconds flat, you have swamp ass. Yeah, like, fuck, man. This movie um, should actually star Nick Nolte's sweat. <laughs> Nick Nolte <laughs> and Power Boost Beard, you know, and, like, starring. Which I I don't know if I don't know if I was just you know not paying attention, but it seems to me like in certain shots, Power Boost Beard like gets more pronouncedly like fuller, and then like the next shot, he's he's almost seems clean shaven. I'm like uh, I don't know, I think they might have fucked up there. I, I didn't have time to go back and double check, but well, uh, I did because oh. <laughs> I, I had some questions during a few shot from shot to shot. It does change considerably. Okay. Because so I, I could have, I could have just you, brother. Okay, because I, I could have swore it to like you know before the final confrontation where Nick Nolte come gets in the Mexico to confront Powers Booth, um, their first meeting up, he's clean shaven, and then like literally the next scene, he's got like five o'clock shadow, or or, even, or worse, like two or three days growth. Man, I, I forgot to mention this. 
I love that Mickey Jones shows up in this movie, which if you don't know the name, uh, this guy has been in just about uh, so many things, including this is a this is a V reunion because he was Ham Tyler's partner in V, M- uh. Michael Ironside's character, which I think is one of the greatest character names of all time. Ham Tyler is um, <laughs> <laughs> explosions and munitions expert Ham Tyler. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I love V so much too. Uh, the the whole I love uh, I love ahead. Ironside in this. Oh yeah, Ironside. I was just gonna say I love Ironside in this. Like he he threatens to steal the fucking show half the time. Like uh, from from what I understand, like he doesn't even this... threaten to sh- steal it. He does. Yeah, like well, straight up. Well, the th- yeah the thing is though, like I I was reading apparently there's like there was a much longer like work print of this before they cut it down, like. I think it was supposed to be like two and a half hours or something like that or more. Ooh, had to bend and, that. And, and a, yeah, and apparently they cut a lot of like Ironside stuff out because apparently he had like his presence was like all over that fucking thing. There, there was like a whole other subplot with him and shit. So they had to cut it down so so everyone would know, hey, Nick Nolte's actually the main character in this, guys. Uh, <laughs> they, they pulled a hard target. They gave you less Henriksen. Come on now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And let's face it here, like Mike, Mike Ironside is pretty much the MVP of this movie. Oh, yeah. He, 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 him and Powers Booth. Those two guys are just it, – it's just a shame that they didn't have anything with the two of them together. I don't think a room could have contained that shit at all. <laughs> I, I do like, like – Too much the, testosterone, too much sweat. They didn't have people mopping it up in the puddles. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I do like the way the mercenaries are introduced, though, because I'm, I'm, I'm an A-team fan – and that, that's all I was thinking the whole time when they were like, they would show up and they showed their dossiers was, you mm-hmm. know, th- this is the fucking A team. And <laughs> you find out that they're, they're, they're not really, they're, they're, they're working to get this money, but only because Cash Bailey's a bad dude and that he knows secrets of the country he's going to expose apparently. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. He, cause he and was those the, secrets are never never talked about again. Yeah, well, you know, Michael Ironside, uh the major uh, yeah, again this film has asshole. you know I, I wish there was a little more because it has like double cross after double cross after double cross, you know, towards the end there here's the here's a twist and here's a twist, and here's a twist and mm-hmm. Clancy Brown has to take over because the major fucks them and makes them expendable at that point and Yeah. Yeah. It's it's I mean, it's 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 really it's really like two or three movies in one, right? Because it, I mean, it easily could have just been about that mercenary team and the double cross. Mm-hmm. That could have been that could have been the whole movie. There's plenty of movies that have been made that have been that. So, yeah, they they, they make them connected though, and that, that's mm-hmm. it, it works in its favor. It doesn't work in its favor, in, in my opinion, because um, the film we do for the Patreon. I I I would almost recommend it. Hell, if it was my my decision, I probably would have picked. Ty Sheridan's Hell or High Water, you know, because it's, it's about okay. the same, same feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you didn't pick a bad one, mind you. I, I love the no, one you I picked. Didn't. You know, but um, it, it has it. that kind of feel, that, that very dusty, you know, sweaty feel of this, these, this, these conflicted lawmen. Mm-hmm. And, again, you, you don't get in a rip torn in this movie because guess what? He gets shot and he gets shot and... I can't believe they killed him in the first act. That's yeah. fucking... It, it's egregious. It's because sacrilege. He's, because I get, I maybe he just didn't want to like. I didn't read anything about problems with him because you know notoriously he's always pretty much been known as an asshole who fucked with directors and stuff. But like I didn't read anything about him being on bad behavior on the shoot, so it's like you can only kind of maybe speculate that maybe he did something, but no one's ever reported on it. So. Uh, I, I don't get why they wrote him out because he's so fucking good. Like, kill him in the last fucking act or something. You know, like, come on, if you're going to kill him. Yeah, it just seemed like a waste of talent at that point, mm-hmm. you know. You uh, get a few lines in there from him, of course. Uh, only thing worse than a politician is a child molester. You get that? Yeah. Out of him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that fucking, I broke out laughing on that one. I was, holy shit. It's like, I would not like this guy in real life. I would not sit down and have a beer with him. But as far you know the, the whole idea the whole idea of um like these republican wish fulfillment movies liberals love them when they're watching them in movies because they're fantasy you know and they're and they're really <laughs> done well done fantasy and like he's an enjoyable character to watch in that regard like i, I wouldn't want to meet him in real life because fuck that shit kicker but um but it's, yeah. it's fun to watch on the tv right <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah 
I still think my favorite line is when he says morning, and he's like, "Ah, what's good about it?" He's like, "Well, hell, I didn't say more. I said morning, not good morning, God." Yeah. <laughs> So cantankerous, and and he's and he's got sort of that um, no country for old men like wariness too, where he's like starting to not understand the new crime or whatever, like uh, Tommy Lee Jones in that movie, where it's like I can't understand these new criminals or whatever, you know. He's like, "Fuck, I used to I used to go fishing with what's his face his old man, and now he's you know running drugs and shit across the border, and and yeah, it's just." A nice little contrast there where it's kind of like changing times or whatever. He's the old dog who who can't hang with, like, the new style criminals and Nick Nolte can because he grew up with them or whatever. But It's got a, it's got a justified feel to it to me. And Justified mm. is one of my favorite shows of probably the last 15 years. N- not because, you know, it's the best thing you're going to watch all, all year. You know, it's, it's good five seasons, but somebody else might not like it. But the relationship between uh, Raylan Givens and... and um. And uh, Walton Goggins' character is escaping me now. Um, but the relationship with those two guys, it's, it's real simple. You know, they, they once were friends. And it, it's it's told in one line by by, by uh, Timothy Oliphant, you know, well, we dug coal together, and that was all you needed to know right there. Mm-hmm. That the, they, when you went down to the coal mine, you had to trust the guys you were with. And yeah, yeah. He, he can't trust that guy no more. You know, <laughs> just like mm-hmm. just like the, the, the ranger can't, can't trust his friend, his friend anymore because he... He was one way, and when he came back, he was another way. And yeah, yeah, the, ex- the exact opposite and they both, there. And they always keep the story about why, like Nick Nolte had left the town. You know, kind of like very vague. It's just like he left, he came back when his dad died, and that was like all mm. you kind of get to know. And it's like just know some years have passed, and that's all you really need to know. You don't, you know, need to know any more than that. Kind of, he kind of alludes to the fact that maybe he got into some bad shit and like changed his ways, kind of thing. Like, like he maybe he had to leave town because he raised so much hell, you know, kind of thing. Well, you know, he said, you know, he told Rip Torn he was he had rolled around and uh, dipped into the loco weed, as he called it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he, I love Rip Torn's reaction to it, and he's like, "You did, and I didn't catch you." And he's just <laughs> like. <laughs> He's just like, God damn, maybe I am getting too old. He is getting kind of like Tommy Lee Jones and No Country for Old Men, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't like Maria Conchita Alonzo before, because she has, you know, that manic Latina voice, uh, you're probably going to hate her in this, because it's, it's uh, still there. And you'll she's, enjoy the shower scene, though. Yeah, 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 she, you'll enjoy that. And she, she, yeah, she, yeah. she, she, sing, she sings in this as well, so. But why oh, yeah. does she sing? Why? <laughs> Why does she sing? And they know. describe her as this, this voice is as beautiful as ever. I'm just like, no, no, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's not. I mean, like she is, yes, but the voice is just like she just. I don't she, know. She, I, she, I, she's not going to win America's Got Talent. No, well, no. I mean, actually, that's why I liked it because the people who do America's Got Talent are fucking produced to hacks. I, I like, <laughs> I, I like, I like her voice in this. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not like she's going to be, you know, selling records or anything like that, but. Like, that's the kind of singer I'd want to hear if I walked into a bar. By the way, no torchy signs to be seen. What the fuck are you doing, Walter Hill? <laughs> You're really starting to let me down here. If anything, you should have had a fucking torchy sign in one of these places. Even the fucking Mexican Cantina, if you wanted to. El Torchos or some Hell. shit. I don't. Yeah, I mean, they could have had it in Spanish. It would have been just fine. Mm-hmm. We picked up on it. Oh, man. Yeah, Larry B. Scott, um, he's like the tech guy in this movie, yeah. and a, a role you you, you wouldn't uh, expect from him because he you know he was an Iron Eagle, he was he was a tri lamb, you know the the, the gay mm-hmm. one if you will, you know. Yeah. Um, but this one he's, he's he kind of has some hard ass moments, and you, you don't really expect that from humble Larry Scott, and he uh, <laughs> he pulls he's it kinda, off pretty well. I I, I kind of yeah recently did predator on my podcast and like we were talking about the uh, the team there and like they're not too dissimilar from the team that we see here in uh, extreme prejudice um you know very easily dutch's team could have been also like a bunch of ex-vietnam guys that you know faked their deaths and are now because they're, they're not like an official military sanctioned team or anything like that they're like they're a black ops kind of wet work kind of team in a way um so similar here, and the uh, Shane Black character in Predator, I'd, I'd, I'd say he's kind of a, analogous to uh, Larry B. Scott in this, where he's like the younger, he's the younger guy 
He's more the nerd, you know, he's kind of like the guy who's, who looks like he, you know, he doesn't fit the team, but you know, when push comes to shove, he does. He just told his wife he wanted a little pussy is all he said, you know, and it <laughs> spoke back to him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. W- William Forsyth is, is, is the guy is, I- I'd say about the William Forsyth film, he's, he's not a vulgar dude in real life, but he says a line when you, when you first meet him in the movie and he just sets the tone for the whole character, you know, where he's, he's oh, in the yeah. airport and he's like, Hey, cowgirl, cowgirl, my cowgirl. He goes, and she, she ignores it completely. And he goes, Something about uh, as long as I got a face, you got a place to sit. I think he says. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like yeah. and you know what you're into with for the rest of the movie with. Or yeah, something. and like initially I hated him, but like he won me over as the film went on, right? Because it's like, oh no, I get it. This guy is just like he is the shit talker who he, half the stuff he says he doesn't even fucking mean. He's just a fucking he's the honorary shit talker, and by the end, you know he's. He's shown to have just as much fucking honor and and dignity as everybody else in the fucking team. Like he he comes to respect Nick Nolte and like you know even gives him a, like a warning. Like you know when the shooting starts, you ain't our friend. You better put your fucking head down or you're gonna get blown off. You know mm-hmm. kind of thing. And he gives him a warning. So yeah, and he's the only one that does. None of the other team uh, you know take the gumption to go and warn. Nolte's character that you know he's got a bullseye painted on his back, you know. Yeah. So it it is kind of a, a little bit of character growth for old Buck. There's there's a scene though where, where they're gonna go where Michael Ironside's gonna go get the the government information uh, out out of our uh, our villains <laughs> got to Cash mm-hmm. Bailey's office to where Clancy Brown uh, he figures out something don't smell right. You you, you kind of wonder you know in that two and a half hours of. Uh, work print or something is there something in there to make him think that the major was gonna fuck him over i it's it's not it's not really a flaw it just seemed like it's, it's it felt like a double cross for having a double cross's sake there and i i wouldn't even call it a flaw it just yeah. it, it just kind of happens like it, it, there should have been like a little it, it, a little quip in there to say hey, you know what the, something will smell right with the major let me go let me go follow him or something you know feels like a bit of a loose end that probably came in the in the edit um <laughs> but I do, from what I understand, the, uh, the 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 sort of subplot, like one of the big things that was cut out, is there was more between Ironside and the and the sort of money man that works for uh, Cash. Uh, what, what what's his name there? The the guy with the with the fucking with the glasses. Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, I forget his name now. Um, yeah, up. yeah, but th- there was like more between them, sort of like plotting behind Cash Bailey's back and uh, in cahoots more kind of thing. There's a lot of that in there, apparently. So, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 if anything, it slowed down the pace. It would have slowed down the pace of the film, and mm-hmm. I, I think the pacing is real fine because you know, once you once you get to that, and they're they're doing when their business to do what they're going to do, you get a lot of a lot of blood and a lot of squibs, and I can appreciate oh, all yeah. of it. Oh yeah, you know, big old fifty oh, cal, that's... big old fifty cal machine guns, and I sound like I'm a duck a gun nut, but I'm I'm not really a gun nut. I just enjoy you know, it action on the screen and it's not going to warp my tiny mind to say, I'm going to go shoot somebody. No, it's not going to do that. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's, it's straight up. It's straight up peck and paw, like slow motion shots and just lots of squibs going everywhere. You know, like tiny Lister getting his shoulders blown out and still standing Which, up and fighting, you know, as a law man, you know, Nick Nolte, when he shoots power, um, tiny Lister in the shoulders, he's shooting him to disarm him. And I can appreciate mm-hmm. that that they that little that little detail to say I'm not going to kill him. I'm just going to disarm him because you yeah. kind well, of do it again. Always, even when he uh, you know shoots Powers Booth at the end when they ha- have the go at it, he he wounds him in the shoulder to dis- disarm him. Yeah. You know, he's just like I'm giving you a chance, buddy. <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah. you know old school but... old school police training. That's what they're supposed to train you how to do is to disarm somebody if you're going to shoot them. But you know, they haven't quite figured that out yet. <laughs> These new well, cops. Yeah, and, and Nick Nolte, like, his character is presented as, like, the most morally upstanding, like, the guy who really sticks to his moral values. Like, he, he's very much, and I believe that even with as this was being written, like, the idea was he's very much a Gary Cooper type cowboy. Um, if you look at any, like, sort of the classic Gary Cooper roles in, in some of the westerns he was in, he, he generally plays a character like this, you know, where he's very... Uh, stick to his guns, uh, not, you know, excuse the pun there, but very, you know, morally, p- 
pure in, in a way, in, in the sense that like he has his he has his moral values, he has his code, and like he sticks to it. Um, it's kind of like the rifleman, but you know, mm-hmm. more more modern day, I guess, more yeah, modern yeah. day for 1987. Oh boy, yeah, it's a great time though. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of folks caught this now. It's, it's not really a lost, you know, Walter Hill movie. It's kind of like one that a lot of folks don't talk about, but. Like Cameron said, that Best Friend Blu-ray came out, and a lot of friends who who have seen it before, you know, were showing, especially on social media, showing the love. Like, I, I can't believe this is finally happening, and this is on Blu-ray. And mm. I know a lot of folks that never seen it before have bought it for that reason, because you know, Vestron they used to be like the price of Screen Factor, but now they're like eleven dollars. Oh, really? So you can go get a nice edition of this movie for like eleven bucks. God damn! Pick it up. You have to take a chance on it, and you know, and fucking enjoy yourself because this mm-hmm. is this is a an action movie that you may have never heard of that has all these great you know heavies in it that you see in other stuff, and you just just uh mm-hmm. yeah, turn on and enjoy yourself. And I, I that's all I can really say, you know. And I'm not really surprised by that two and a half hour cut because it's John Milius, and he always wants to make you know longer he wants to make conan the barbarian again yes he always wants to make an epic <laughs> oh my gosh here's cool how you're introducing powers booth is he um in, uh he lets a scorpion crawl on his hand and he crushes it in his hand uh, apparently mm. he did that in one take <laughs> yeah i believe it <laughs> <sighs> so it does have some animal cruelty you know in it but whatever yeah. uh <laughs> Uh, Nick Nolte modeled his character on Joaquin Jackson, a, a real Texas Ranger. Nolte spent three weeks in Texas with Jackson, learning the day-to-day activities of a Ranger. Nolte took what he learned and incorporated it into his character, the mannerisms, and dress. Because he's, um, you know, much like the, much not like the the, the guy we're going to talk about in the next movie, uh, the Patreon show. Um, the, the, those clothes are always clean, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain this. It's just, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Until, until, until we see him back in Mexico when all, when you know, and nobody's clean then. Nobody's so. clean then. They're all, they're all just yeah. dirty. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this jacket is just uh, all smudgy and dirty. In this, but you yeah. yeah. know, how, how how long are you going to keep a white jacket and hat like that? You know, spectacularly <laughs> clean and tied clean. You know, down there. It's like it's it's like as soon as you hit Mexico. You immediately hit a wall of heat, and you immediately sweat buckets, and you hit a wall of dust at the same time. So it's like, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, after filming of the final shootout was done, Walter Hill was told to include more of it, so he went back and shot more footage, but in the end, cut it down. Because in his words, it got too big. This is probably why the scene has some con- continuity mistakes, which are often thought to be caused by cuts made on violent scenes to avoid an X rating. Mm, yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't see where anything would have been cut <laughs> because <laughs> it's pretty violent. <clears throat> like it, it, it's pretty violent even for 1987. Like it's it's pretty out there. So, oh, those squibs! They use a half mm-hmm. gallon for each one, man. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, I'm there for it. I'm there for it. There's a lot of hamburger being blown out of people. <laughs> in that Apparently, some of the stuff that was cut out of the film was a. Uh, uh, a whole Andrew Robinson role was clearly cut out. Oh, that's what it was. That, yeah. yeah, that it was that and uh, Michael Ironside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh man, what else is getting here? We're, we're looking right now. Uh, yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, he, he did work with Peck and Paul in the Getaway in 1972, and uh, mm-hmm. tipped his hat to Sam a couple times in the film. A yeah, couple that, of times. A couple of times, yeah. How about how about fifteen times, probably at least, yeah. <laughs> should be paying him. Should be would should have been paying paying him royalties if Sam was still alive at that point. Yeah, no kidding. Nick Nolte lost. Let's, the, let's face it. You could have just like cut and pasted the 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 last act of the Wild Bunch in this, mm-hmm. and it would have fit fit in just perfectly. Totally. Uh, I know that I'm complaining. I'm not complaining oh, at yeah. all. But I mean, you know, it's there. <laughs> Nolte lost more than fifty pounds to play the character. Must have been hanging out in Mexico the whole time, just sweating away. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he could have just been drinking the water, and that would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, there's there's a lot here you could read. There's a commentary on the disc. I, I don't think it's about by Walter Hill, but um, I think Courtney Joyner did the commentary and somebody else, and I'm sure you get a lot of information from there. Could go, go, again, it's like $12. 
you know, for those Vestron mm. releases. You can't, you can't yeah, go wrong I think with I picked that. mine up for like 13 at, at Walmart. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, great times of this movie. Like I said, an, an amazing cast and, and a film you probably missed. Um, Clancy Brown in a cowboy hat. Just, 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 just go for that, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let alone for his line where he's just like, yeah, when he's telling the story about how a cop knocked him out. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. And he got ran over by an LTD, which is why he likes sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's just there's there's a certain way about him in this movie about Clancy Brown, you know, to go from the, the you know, from Highlander to this. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like how all the dudes on the on the military team like. They're presented as tough guys, but they're not over the top tough guys. Like they're they're not tough guys because they talk a lot of shit. They're tough guys just because they get their fucking work done. Like when they when they set up that mock robbery and all that shit. Like they just uh, it's almost Michael Mann level detail when they actually do that that sort of mock heist or whatever to to set things up for their mission. One of my one of my favorite things is that they they tell they give you little quips about their their their, their missions together because. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you like full details, but you could tell these guys that work together, these guys know each other, you know, they trust each other, and it, it shows in, in the acting of the film, I think. Yeah, especially when they start to question Michael Ironside, and it causes tension between the group because they want to follow orders. They want, like, they consider everybody in the team like family and brothers and all that shit that they depend on. And when one or two of them start to question, and when fucking. Um, Clancy Brown is the second in command, basically has to like try to keep them in order. But at the same time, he's starting to question Michael Ironside. So they're like, there's all this back and forth conflict between several guys. And it's really well done. Like it it gives, frankly, it gives you more background and more realism than the team in uh, Predator. And, and I, and I think one of the strengths of Predator is that that team feels pretty real as well, even though it's a big macho over the top action film. You know, everybody's like muscle bound and, you know, mm. predator where in this one, there's a few people in it that just look like normal everyday men, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and they're just like, they're not sharing too much about like their, you know, their backgrounds. It's just a, like an off the hip, off the hip, you know, like, hey, remember that job we did in Nicaragua mm-hmm. or, you know, like, hey, where were you at? I was in German, Germany and like, oh, you know, and they're just talking about where they were at and they, they're all disappointed. The fact that they're doing a job in Texas. Yeah. Like, like they're burying when they have to bury. Uh, oh, I forgot the one character's name. Isn't it? I think uh, it's Fry. Luther Fry. Fry. Yeah, yeah, Luther Fry. When he gets shot outside the, you know, the mock robbery, you know, he's just like, you know, I thought I'd be burying him in like, in some Slavic country or Russia, yeah. but you know, burying him in fucking Texas, and they're just like, why, <laughs> you know, why is this even <laughs> happening? They get, they get that dollar, dollar, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hate to keep going back to uh, the A team, but you know that they. they if you watch the A team and you love it like I do and other folks do, you know you had B A who was the tough guy, you had Face who was the charismatic guy, uh, Murdoch who was the wild card, but you, you had you had uh, Hannibal Smith who was the who was the colonel and always was the colonel. This is the guy I took mm-hmm. orders from, and so the the idea of them questioning you know the major, you know the whole they they pretty much follow him the whole way until yeah. they f- figure out in the end that they're getting fucked over. What well, Clancy Brown figures it out and. Yeah, it's, I, you almost. He, I I kind of think that William Forsythe is in on is on, in on it too because he's kind of waiting at the bar to see what happens next while the other guys are outside. I think he. I think he. You know, he's 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 slightly more of a gray area guy where it's like you know I might be able to turn this in my favor. Like I'll see how things sort of stack up and where things sort of you know lean to and like if I can cut a deal with Michael Ironside to get out of here, I I probably will, but. Because when he says, oh, plans change, we're going 15 minutes early, you think the other guys would have followed them inside, but then, then again, they had orders from, from the, the major to take out to the, mm-hmm. the machine gun towers, and, you know, it was a big a big setup, and I just... um. Although, it, although William Forsythe also, I, I feel like he also wants to just redeem himself, too, because he's the one who fucked up the robbery, yep. you know, he's the one who got one of their guys killed, even though he tries to play it off like it's just part of the job you can tell it kind of bothers them so yes yeah, so I, I think we all dug it um any final oh, yeah. words from you cam oh I, I i just gotta tell people like if you're listening to this and you haven't watched the movie what are you doing uh what are you doing with your life mm. and i question your existence no watch <laughs> this fucking movie it's fucking great it's one of my 
it's definitely a top five Walter Walter Hill movie for me. It's probably a top ten action movie for for me overall. Um, I just love the idea of a dirty and scuzzy A team, you know, that you know, as you put it, you know, kind of decides at the end to, to question their using air quotes here that you can't see at their version of Hannibal, you know, because they all have that moment where, you know, I think it's Clancy Brown that says, you know, it's a highly peculiar, ain't it, Karen, killing an American peace officer, you know, yeah. who's like actually helping us. And, you know, uh, it's, it's just great. It's a great ensemble movie, probably has one of the best casts besides, you know, besides probably Southern Comfort might rank a close mm-hmm. second or, yep. you know, I'd, I'd have to really think about it, but the two best casts. Uh, cast in movies in his filmography. I, I love it. Action packed. You, you know, if you want to see Michael Ironside literally turn into the fucking Terminator by the end of this movie, half his face blown off, you know, yep. shot all the shit and just, just, you know, going all scanners fucking crazy on shit. Watch <laughs> it. Watch this movie. No, it's wonderful. Lee. Yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, it's one of the best action films in the 1980s. It is the best Sam Peckinpah movie Sam Peckinpah did not make. Um, I absolutely fucking loved it. Going to be getting myself a copy of this and revisiting it a lot. It's really, really good. Really, really good. One of my favorite sort of new new uh, first-time watches for this year. Loved it. Cool. Yeah, I dig it too, man. If you haven't heard uh, the the glowing review of why I love it so much, uh, go back and listen to it again. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I recommend and a cheap pickup for for anybody to get if you have a a regionless player. But I think Vestron releases overseas titles uh, later. I think or same time. I know I've seen that 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 the the UK rating on on the label of some of the slipcovers. So. I know you guys could probably get it there by now. Um, but that's it for this one. Next episode you should hear that's not the Patreon one uh, will be Red Heat, which I, I, I forgot to mention that uh, it'd be a second collaboration with Mario Kassar a, a, after this as a producer. Um, that's the guy gave us like Total Recall and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, um, but yeah, that stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Belushi being obnoxious and if you didn't like William Forsyth in this movie, you're going to hate Jim Belushi in the next movie, probably. I got a feeling, because um, he's a, <laughs> he's classic. You know, Jim Belushi, and it's the 80s. Racist, 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 probably. Perestroika. I, I, I forget <laughs> I forget dialogue, but I'm quite sure communism comes up many, many times out of his mouth. But, um, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. Heat. It's a movie that has not aged well, but it's still a lot of fun. But Yo! Ooh. We're doing that next. Time. I'm looking forward to it because I, I, it's not one of my more enjoyable ones, but it's still, it's still very enjoyable in, in a sense. Uh, that's kind of up next on that. And um, this has been Last Call of Torchies, and we'll see y'all again next time. Bye bye. Later. <laughs>